Hi, I'm Shani. I was in camp in 2015, almost six years ago. Heart to Heart is an amazing program, and I'm really grateful that I am part of it because it gave me and still gives me so much, even now that I'm 21 and I'm in the army. I still remember my first night of camp when I was so tired and Asil woke me up and asked me to go to the bathroom with her because she was scared to go alone. And I just thought to myself, wow, she could have asked one of the Arab girls in her native language, but she chose me. I felt so special that she felt comfortable enough to ask me and the experience brought us closer together because it didn't matter that, that she's Arab and I'm Jewish. In that moment, we were just two scared girls wandering around at night, lost and trying to find the bathroom. The next few weeks were filled with a lot of fun and also some really hard conversations. I remember in one activity about national anthems, Zena and I got into a heated and passionate argument. Finally, our counselor, Erica, told us we would have to agree to disagree, but I was worried that what I said hurt Zena and I felt that our friendship was ruined. I actually became a bit distant because I didn't know how to talk to her about it. But a few days later, we were walking back to the cabin after canoeing and she came up to me and we started talking about everything and nothing. And we somehow ended up walking arm in arm, singing songs from the children's show, The Pyjama. And then I realized that we were creating all of the fun in order to be able to talk about these harder things and still remain friends and form the connection that are still with me to this day. And I know that in the future, my kids and Zenith's kids will be friends and we'll go over for Ramadan and they will come over for Passover. At the end of camp, our counselors started preparing us to go home, telling us to be ready for it to be hard. They reminded us that we were going back to our separate communities and schools and vacation schedules and everything. But I was so sure it was going to be easy because the girls especially were so close and we talked about how it would be forever, even when we went to university and the army. And for the first little while, it really was. We were in this beautiful heart-to-heart -heart honeymoon bubble, talking all the time on our WhatsApp group and having sleepovers and everything. And I was sure it was going to stay like that, easy. But eventually we met less and we talked less and the bubble burst. And it's not that it completely burst. These are still some of my closest friends. I'm still friends with Asil and Zena and Taima. And my best friend is Fanny one of the boys from our group, who I see almost every week. He's the one who came to pick me up when I broke up with my boyfriend. And even though when we were out together and people are looking at us funny when they realize that I'm a Jew and he's an Arab, he's still my best friend and I wouldn't trade it for anything. But now that I'm in the army, there's a big gap between the experiences I'm having and the experiences my Arab friends are having in university. Both are very intense and we don't have much in common to talk about our daily lives right now. When another bubble bursts, like after Mishnat Shirut or how I'll get to be after the army, you don't have people telling you that the people you love are bad and you should want to kill them or that they want to kill you. Being in the army, my whole life is about a conflict. It's something that surrounds me everywhere and is what I do from morning until night. It's also the first time that I'm surrounded by people who don't share my views and who really think and say horrible things about Arabs. We aren't allowed to talk about politics in the army and especially with my job as a mini social worker, I'm not supposed to. So it's a hard situation to navigate, but I think it's really important to still talk about these things, but you need to learn how to talk about these things. For example, one person I did speak to about my politics is my soldier, Shaha. She is right wing and she was so surprised to hear that I'm left wing because I'm so nice. We ended our conversation with a hug and she's still right wing and I'm still left wing. But now she understands that yes, I have our friends and yes, I slept in their houses and no, they didn't kill me. It's also really difficult for me on the other side because I see things that my Arab friends post on social media about the conflict and about how soldiers are bad. But now I identify with the soldiers because I am one and I feel proud to serve my country and to wear my uniform but I also love my Arab friends. My views are changing and it's really confusing and complicated for me. And I'm having this identity crisis all the time about who I am and how to talk about myself with people in the army, with my Arab friends and mostly with myself. Heart to Heart gave me a lot of tools to handle this situation, but even more than that, it's still here for me now. I went to camp in 2015, but everyone is still here for me 
and we have the conferences and the WhatsApp group. And it really means a lot that I know that I can still talk to Jenny in the middle of the night when I'm on Shmira about all these things without judgment. And that I know I can still talk to my friends like Femi and Zena and Asir. And that we can keep having these hard conversations and learn and grow from it. Camp was amazing, but it doesn't stop there. I thought it would, but as I grew older, it just became more important and more relevant. Heart to Heart impacted me so much and made me who I am today. It enabled me to have this perspective and see the world in a more complicated and I think more accurate way. But because of that, my life is a little bit harder. I know that I needed Heart to Heart when I was in Shnat Shirut, and also now that I'm in the army, and I know I'll still need it in the future. Without it, I would feel lost because it helps me navigate the complex experience of living here and continuing to be a leader and make change. What we have now is incredible and I'm grateful for it, but we want to keep growing this community. So we still need your support. I still need your support because even though it's been six years and even though it's hard, I'm still trying to make change and I can't do it alone. <laughs>